We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on Durham Smythe, tight end for the Miami Dolphins. Just got a contract extension through 2025. I'm a fan of him as a player. I just think the reason they did this contract extension, while it might surprise some people because he's not some world-beating tight end, it's because he's just an excellent fit for the offense. The coaching staff really, really likes Durham Smythe. And last year, I know people think of Gasecki as the tight end one, but Smythe more was the tight end one for this offense last season. He's an excellent blocker, brings a ton of value, run blocking, pass blocking. Not going to see a ton as a receiver, especially versus man-to-man. -man. He doesn't give you much as a route runner, but he can find soft spots versus his own. He's better after the catch than Gaseki was. Not great there either, but still offers a little bit of value. And I think that's important for this offense. The versatility he brings as a blocker is probably the most important thing. And just, this doesn't really stop the team from taking a tight end. I think you get Sam Laporta, a player like him in the draft, Pair him with Durham Smythe. That's a really good one-two combo. I think Smythe is like an ideal tight end too, which is very important still in this offense. So definitely a player to keep an eye on. We're going to really break down this film because Smythe, I think overall, had a pretty solid season last year. I really thought this is where Smythe excelled the most last season, you know, when he was in line, attached to the line of scrimmage, and he would work these combos and then climbed the second level versus a linebacker. He did a really good job in these scenarios. We'll watch, break this down a little more slowly. He's got this edge defender basically lined up head up on him, and he just attacks that low hip right there, allows Armstead to reach him, which is exactly what you want you know, on this toss right here. They're trying to capture the edge and then take Milano to the second level. He takes a great angle to get there, and then Milano does a good job of getting to that outside shoulder, but once you know Smythe gets him there, he's just like, you know what, I'm just going to keep driving him to the outside and then give a cutback lane, give your back to the running back. Someone else ends up getting beaten for it to get the tackle there, but Smythe executes his job to perfection, attacking the low hip, getting the second level. He does a good job of resetting his hands here because he initially just gets engaged with his um, right hand, leaves that left hand sort of wide, kind of just throws his chest into Milano's chest, and then sort of gets re-engaged here, gets his hands, uses them to extend, drive Milano um, out of the play, would have gave Wilson this cutback lane right here. So just excellent work from Smythe. That's just a reason he's a way better fit for this offense than Gusecki was. And I think, you know, add a tight end to this room and you're going to be very happy with what you got. This is a third and one situation. Dolphins kind of like to do this last season when they went to screens. They would have their best blockers out wide with like Durham Smythe and then Trent Shurfield, who's the best blocking receiver, and then have him just block for Tyreek Hill on the screen. He's a really good out in space blocking versus DBs. He's very comfortable in that area. You can see he takes great angles, gets under control right here, gets good hand placement, squares this guy up on the outside, and then once he gets engaged, he does a great job sustaining. He extends those hips, drive those feet, and then allows Tyree Kill to get a nice first down there. Um, excellent work from Smythe. I love the versatility as a blocker that he can bring. You're going to see all the different types of ways that he was used this past season in this film breakdown. It's one of Smythe's biggest receiving plays last season. Came versus the Jets. Just working versus the zone, getting the outside on his wheel route, making a nice adjustment at the catch point, sort of slowing down once he gets into this zone where he finds all this space right here. He goes out like he's going to block initially, selling that he's going to block, and then accelerates to the outside. He's not going to, you know, be some crazy athlete out there, but he is solid at the catch point making these adjustments. We can watch it from the other angle here. Smythe in line right here, and we'll just watch him get to the outside. Skylar Thompson making this throw, sort of just lobs it up. They're facing like a quarters look. He gets, uh, Sauce gets too far to the inside. Um, and then Smythe makes that adjustment. Full body extension. You can see the hand catch technique. Tracks it all the way in. You got to be able to make adjustment. Tough catches as a tight end, especially at the NFL level. And Smythe, I think that's an area where he can at least make those types of impacts in the passing game. And I wouldn't be surprised, especially because I don't know if they're going to add a tight end in the draft. They only have four picks. I still think they will and probably should. But if Smythe does have to be the tight end one with no Gusecki, he's probably going to see a little more pass game usage. And uh, it's not something I'm totally against. This is a third and one situation. And just watch Smythe fire off the ball here. This defensive end right here has an inside shade on him. And he just gets out to cut him off. And look how physical he was. The burst off the line. Like you have to be like the bend, the burst, the base, the balance. Very important when blocking. And he shoots off the line here. Able to cross his face. Get him squared up. And then extend, you can see how he uses his right hand, hand to turn, um, just really good force, shock in his hands there. Defensive end even tosses him off a little and he recovers instantly, showing, showing off some good balance to then, you know, 
help push back, get his back, give this lane to the running back. He just does a great job of knowing his positioning and allowing his running back to work off the back of his blocks and then recut him back off. Another excellent play there to create that opening lane on a third and one situation. These are the types of plays where you're probably going to see Smythe have most of his impact as a receiver, sort of, you know, check, release out of the backfield, find the soft spot for his zone. You know, he's initially going to block, but he is not threatened by anything. This guy ends up dropping into coverage. So now he just releases out of the backfield, finds this soft spot, quarterback able to find him. And then he does a really good job here. Watch how he catches this and instantly moves his hips to transition up the field. This is a really good job of shifting your momentum allowing yourself you can see how he opens up his hips right as he's about to catch the ball and this allows him to get up field maximize his yard and pick up the first down if he doesn't flip his hips like that he probably doesn't get the first down and this is another reason i would say you know gaseki really added no value after the catch like as a receiver like he's a, a much better route runner than smythe is and then he's better at the catch point than smythe but as a yard after catch guy like the tight end position is very, very important in this offense. Just watch how George Kittle was used. That's another reason I think they still take a tight end because Smythe, while being better after the catch than Gusecki, still isn't great in that area. I think you add a guy like Laporta, Kraft, Washington, if he's there. Um, those guys are amazing after the catch, and it's such an important thing for this offense. You add one of those guys, and, it, and I think it just makes this offense way better um, in the receiving game and the running game. Just adds value to both sides. Smythe right here, he's blocked by this defensive end, you can't really see him, but he has a great job of climbing to the second level, this time not working, you know, to, you know, help like on a combo and then climbing, he's just working past 91 here, knowing that this split zone block's gonna come in from angled to take him off, seal him out, and he just instantly gets to number 7, who's, you know, not an easy block to make on space, like he's got nothing to worry about, and Smythe just comes up, squares him up he gets low good pad level good leverage hands inside the chest and now he's just sustaining driving he does a great job not allowing this linebacker to stack and shed and then giving his back to the running back again giving him this lane to burst for extra yardage another good example of what Smythe really excels at adds to this offense it's the little things that are important i know he's not going to be some big time name for the team but he brings value and is definitely a guy that you should try to keep an eye on and just seeing what he brings this value to this offense because the coaching staff really really likes him really effective block here from Smythe down blocking number 55 right here pushing this edge just completely washing him out of the play giving Jeff Wilson this sort of you know bounce to the outside working behind this guard right here this is exactly what he wants 55 you know he gets his control of his gap you think he's going to win this play and Smythe just keeps driving like this is a hard thing to do because this guy is fully extended exactly where he wants to be has that long arm on him and Smythe is still able to get his hands out like when a defensive has a long arm like this your one arm is longer than when you have your two arms extended uh completely straight out in front of you so it's very difficult but he stays with it and keeps driving which allows Wilson to cut bounce to the outside another good block there from Smythe we've seen many different types of blocks so far especially when he's lined up in line uh we saw him also lined up um, out on the edge too we'll see a couple different looks throughout this breakdown as well this time Smythe off ball tight end get him more on the move this time you got to be able to block on the move in this offense they do the pre-snap adjustment with Alec Ingold he gets down into being you know ISO fullback and then they motion Smythe you got to be able to block on the move he creates a lane really good job using his hips turning sustaining gets that strain you can see how he gets there quickly and then starts to break down square this guy up create this lane doesn't allow him to just completely constrict this run lane either and now once he gets in control you can see he turns his hips use that right arm to completely extend right there which he you know move him to the outside and then there's this lane to work off the back of Smythe he does a great job high hand low hand very important high hand low hand and then you turn and now you're just complete control of the defensive end take him out of the play you got if you can block defensive end one-on-one -on -one like this uh, whether you're just in line straight up aligned pre-snap or on the move on it's like a split zone look it's very important for this offense and it's a reason Smythe is going to have a job in the NFL for a long time even though he's not some top tier tight end Smythe does a great job with his positioning on this play on this uh, Savan Ahmed touchdown look how he's able to cut off 55 get his back to for the runner again like sometimes it's not about like a lot of people want to talk about displacement moving in the running game but sometimes it's just about positioning like 55 uh head up right here in this technique uh six technique actually head up with the tight end 
and Smythe gets off the ball quickly. You can see the athleticism. You got to be able to cut off these defensive ends. He gets his inside leverage here, and he's like sort of just using that like left hand to keep him cut off. And now he flips his hips to get him completely cut off, then gives him this back. Now the defensive end has no chance to make a play on this, and then gives Ahmed a one on one in space with his safety. So great job from Durham Smythe sticking with the play. It's an impressive run blocking rep right there from Durham. We get to see a nice pass blocking rep from Durham Smythe. He actually had some success in this game going versus Nick Bosa, which is surprising. They try to bring, you know, the offensive tackle from the opposite side of the formation to give him some help. But Durham Smythe just immediately jump sets right into him, takes this out, and he squares him up. This is a good base, good bend in the knees, gets hand placement, leverage, and then Bosa tries, you know, push back. Uh, Smythe does a good job with his anchor holding his ground, not giving up too much space. And then now once Bosa is sort of, you know, starts to release he's too far past him so he just drives him out of the play that's a pretty nice pass blocking rep versus nick bosa nick bosa had some success in this game but all the success came when derm smythe either was not there to help chip or you know just work on him one-on-one -on -one like that derm smythe did a pretty solid job working the middle of the field when he did get targeted in this area um tua likes to throw you know these timing routes over the middle of the field a lot throws it with anticipation smythe finds that soft spot in the zone right there he wastes no time in his route stem, gets out of there, immediately is snapping his head around knowing Tua is his quarterback. He's not even past the linebacker yet. Knowing he's going to take a hit as well. Braces for contact, working over the middle of the field. Nice play from Durham. You got to be able to do this in the offense if you're going to be, you know, either tight end one or tight end two for the team. You at least got to be able to work over the middle of the field for zone, especially when McDaniel's calling plays and Tua is the quarterback. This is an important area to be successful. Taking a nice hit there as well. So impressive play from Smythe. You got if he can do those types of things in the receiving game, then I'm not too worried if he is like the starting tight end next year, because uh, they're not you know going to be facing too much man-to-man -to -man coverage when you have Hill and Waddle on the outside. Dolphins have loved to use these different types of pass protections all year long, especially with the play action out of shotgun, where they slide everything to the left and bring the tight end to the opposite side of the formation, you know, working like this split flow right here. And he then gets one-on-one -on -one with Nick Bosa, and he squares him up, does a good job getting in great positioning again, versus the, one of the top edge rushers in the NFL, gives to it enough time to get rid of this ball, get a, you know, nice 19-yard completion. It's obviously not perfect. He gets pushed probably a little too far into the pocket, but initially, this is a really good work with his hands, the body positioning, the leverage he's playing with, the bend, the base is good, um, not too wide, not too narrow as well, and he just does a great job extending his hips into it, tries to anchor as much as he can, gets pushed a little bit late, but timing, very important, great job. If you can have a tight end that's able to do that versus Nick Bosa, at least on a few reps, that's a lot, that's very, very important to what you can do as an offensive play caller. Last play, let him break down. This is his touchdown versus the Texans, working in scramble drill with Tua. Really more of a really good Tua play, but you gotta you know want to show off his touchdown and good job sticking with it as well. Um, this is an important part, you know, of being a receiver at the NFL level, being able to work in these scramble drills. A lot of things go off script nowadays. Um, obviously, he's not really open initially in this route. Tua has to break out of the pocket once he feels the pressure, and Smythe sees him rolling out to the left, so he just sticks with it. Um, sort of, you know, scans the field, sees that he's open, gives himself to an easy target over the middle, catches it, secures it, gets to the ground, doesn't want to take any big hit. Good job there from Smythe. Nothing too crazy going on, but definitely a value that he's brought to this offense. Um, working in, you know, just finding the soft spots in zone. That's kind of what scramble drill is anyways. Just later in the play, uh, things get a little more hectic. Big fan of uh, keeping Smythe on the roster just because he's an excellent fit in McDaniel's scheme. I don't think he's some top tier tight end, not some delusional type of thing, but he was the tight end one for the team last year. You probably don't want him to be your tight end one. Coming into this year, I still think you add value in this draft. There's a really good uh, tight end draft class. Tight end, uh, Durham Smythe is your like ideal tight end too. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm a big, big fan of what he can do in that area, playing like, you know, 30-ish snaps a game, which, you know, is still an important you know, part of the team people don't think about too often. You're going to, you know, look at the big time playmakers on this offense, but Smythe brings some value to, you know, both the running game and the passing game, mostly as a blocker in both. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, share, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace, 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 peace.